Welcome, it's His Majesty's Sussex Report. In our last episode, Love, Resilience, Courage, Adversity, we laid the groundwork on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex story. How this fairy tale turned into the prince with his wife and newborn fleeing Britain, seeking safety elsewhere. 6 a.m. on the 14th of March, and we are on a freedom flight. We are leaving Canada and we are headed to Los Angeles. Grandma's here. Hi, Grandma. Ruth's here with a ball in the mouth. Can't you say hi? We've got to go on money. So busy. I just knew the stress that they were under. This is the current situation thanks to another amazing friend who we've never met, but who believes in us and wants to help. This episode is on the storyteller, how they prevail, the tabloids. The UK prides itself on free press, which is essential to democracy. This freedom allows journalists to report on matters of public interest, including the royal family, without interference from the government. Freedom of the press, however, can sometimes be misused. The constant pressure to produce sensational stories to meet public demand means tabloids often push the boundaries of ethical reporting. Stories about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle regularly cross into sensational territory, relying on freedom to critique and scrutinize public figures. This is why tabloid reporters like Rebecca English and Richard Eden often escape legal consequences for their stories. Why? There's this thing called anonymous source or sources, which works as a shield for tabloids. One of the most commonly used tactics by tabloids journalists is the heavy reliance on anonymous sources. Phrases like a close friend or a palace insider are used to publish sensational stories while shielding the identity of the source. This allows for the spread of unverified information leading to damaging headlines without accountability. Many have pointed out that anonymous sources can easily be fabricated or exaggerated. Rebecca English and Richard Eden have published numerous stories about Meghan Markle based on such sources. Those who are bought in to the absolute journalistic integrity of those two, well, good luck for you and you can buy into their storytelling. The rest of us see through their bull. Yes, I said bull. I didn't say the other thing. Bull, even though I'm tempted to. Let me say this. There's nothing to trust about what they say. Not one single word. Why defamation cases rarely happen. Defamation cases are notoriously hard to win in the UK, particularly for public figures. Libel laws in the UK place the burden of proof on the claimant, meaning that figures like Prince Harry must prove the falsity, damage, and malicious intent behind the statements. This is made even more difficult 
when the stories are based on anonymous sources. Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, successfully sued the Mail on Sunday over publication of a private letter to her father. But such victories are rare due to the cost and difficulty involved in proven malice, especially when anonymous sources are involved. Now, you would think, are they regulatory bodies to limit these powers? Well, there is the Independent Press Standard Organization, IPSO. They are responsible for overseeing the UK press, handling complaints and ensuring adherence to ethical standards. However, the body's effectiveness has been questioned. Its ability to impose meaningful consequences allows tabloids to continue pushing boundaries with little fear of any repercussions. When Jeremy Clarkson published an offensive, I mean, offensive is not even the right word, but we'll say offensive article about Meghan Markle, Ipso received thousands of complaints, but the lack of severe consequences highlights the limitations of the organization. In other words, nothing happened to him. He carried on. Why public figures are easy targets? Well, public figures like the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, are often seen as fair game by the tabloids. For these individuals, the legal threshold is even higher. They must prove actual malice. Meaning, the false statements were published with knowledge of their falsity or with reckless disregard for the truth. So in other words, you have to get into the person's mind who was publishing this particular article. So how do you get into their mind to prove that it was, hmm, hmm. It's like, which came first, the egg or the chicken? Not sure. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it fall, does it make a sound? Example, when Harry and Meghan stepped back from royal duties, they faced relentless attacks from figures like Richard Eden, who criticized them for betraying the monarchy. Despite their reasons being grounded in protecting their family from media harassment. And they couldn't do anything. He told whatever stories he wanted to tell about why they had decided to step down. Now, the case of Rebecca English, who often crosses the line, I mean, all of them really do cross the line quite often. Now, Rebecca English has faced some criticism for her pointed and sometimes cruel comments about Prince Harry. For instance, she once compared him to a toddler, you know, having a tantrum. She loves to infantilize him. I wonder why that is. However, she has continued to publish and make similar content due to the protective mechanism in place. Freedom of the press, anonymous sources and the challenges of pursuing legal action. Now, the ability of journalists like Rebecca English and Richard Eden to create, publish, and provide their commentary on controversial stories speak to a broader issue within British tabloid journalism. Now, let me note something here. Now, remember, they create these stories then they publish them. Then they provide their own commentary to the story that they produced. Example, you know, the, the visits that the Duke and Duchess had to Colombia? Who called it faux, the faux tour, the faux royal tour? It wasn't Harry or Meghan. You see, the tabloids, they invent these things. They label them. They create the storm. And then 
they publish the storm and then they provide commentary about the storm and they blame the person who's had nothing to do with the storm. As a matter of fact, hasn't said a word. Do you get what's going on here? Do you get my drift? Okay. I knew you were... You, you, you would get it. Now, the balance between freedom of the press, ethical reporting, and accountability is currently completely screwed. I mean, skewed, not screwed. Skewed. They're, they're quite similar words. So, you know what I meant. Allowing for the spread of damaging stories with little consequences. Oh, and how do they know it? While they are mechanism like IPSO and libel laws to address on ethical reporting, many argue that they are not strong enough to deter bad actors and the cost to the victim is way too high to take the risk to take them to court. Until there are significant legal reforms and stricter ethical standards, public figures will continue to be easy targets for sensational journalism. There have been a call, as of late, for legal reforms to make it easier for individuals to challenge defamatory statements and hold media organizations accountable. However, Changes in the law can be slow and complex. And not even to mention the people behind these tabloids, the owners. What is in it for them? Here you have a prince who pretends to be everything the system wants him to be including marrying someone who would do absolutely anything to become a royal. Does this make him full of resentment and anger? And here you have a prince who lived life on his own terms, including marrying someone who would stick by his side, even if he left the royal bubble. And despite the system that raised him, he appears to be very kind and generous, a lot like his mother, whose highest calling was serving others who needed her most. Don't forget to leave. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this proposition or to this question. 
and I appreciate your feedback on, on it because it is something that I've been thinking about. And for me, it's very important that all of you are an integral part of this channel, of the things that are curated for the channel and how and what kind of content I bring to you. Now, here is my dilemma. I recently asked my niece, if you folks may re um, re recollect, to gather information as to why Prince Harry and Meghan were in Colombia to prove a point. And within, I think it was 10 minutes or so, she came back with, with a report basically outlining why they were there and purpose and all of that. But in the same um, report, I want to call it, um, her and I had a discussion about, about it. And one of the things that she brought to my attention is AI. Now, AI, artificial intelligence, is going to be taking over much of what we do. And much of our information will be coming from AI, the same way how today we go on Google or Yahoo or whatever search site you um, you prefer and you type in what your query is and then it will give you right it will give you options from which one you want to pick from now there is there's reasons why it will give you certain options people pay to be at the top all this kind of stuff right but here's what was brought to my attention which I find qu quite <sighs> curious but at the same time alarming so what AI does is dependent on how it has been trained this the amount of data right and from where it collects its data from that is the information that ai contains so for example um trained ai such as ChatGPT or any other um ai that one may use they have a a, a search system Right, a training data for that AI. So it will collect information from, let's say, customer data held by an organization. Um, it may collect information from Spotify, from listening history, from Facebook, from um, YouTube. It may collect uh, information from web scraping, right? Scraping the web and, and, and collecting all of that data. So it's being trained, and that's the way it's trained, right? AI presently has been trained in all of our, our, our information. So if you have, for example, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, AI is collecting that information of how we react to certain stories, what kind of stories we watch, um, and it's collecting all that data, right? Now, what happens? When it collects all that data, you as the user, let's say you're using one of the platforms, uh, very soon, that's how we will be searching the web, or that's where we will be getting information. If I were to type in, for example, Meghan Markle, if I were to type in Prince Harry, if I were to type in um, the Princess of Wales, what happens now is that the AI goes out and it looks at the data that it has collected. Now, if it has collected a thousand articles that tells it that um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are awful people, right? So a thousand articles. It looked at, at, at websites, it looked at newspaper clippings, all this stuff. And it also collected 100 articles that said the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are great people. Now the information, because now it will take that information, scramble it together, and respond back to you depending on the prompt that you gave it. So what it will do, because it has a thousand articles saying they're bad people, what do you think it's going to produce? So the answer that you will get, it will be a narrative that they're bad people. That's alarming to me. 
So I know that a lot of you, and so am I, a lot of you are sick and tired of having to look at, watch, listen to these deranged people, these purveyors of hate, of lies, of what I may call dark clouds of evil. But if none of us are <laughs> providing a counter history or a counterpoint or calling them out on their nonsense, then the future that, that is now, right? The future is not tomorrow. The future is now. What artificial intelligence is collecting is collecting information that my niece in five minutes was able to give me an entire like article for me to read that 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 AI produced that did not paint the Sussexes in a good light at all. Because what it did it scraped information or collected the information, whether it's it's from the tabloids, whether it's 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 it's, it's from these these shows, right? And just fed back a lot of that information based on the prompt. So my dilemma becomes as a content creator who wants to do a few things. I want to do good in the world, right? And I want to uplift. And for me, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are two people that symbolizes what's good in the world. And I want to be able for this community that supports them, that um, understand the mission that they're on, for us to keep uplifting them. But I also know that I can't ignore completely the other side that is feeding this information into, not into some vacuum, it's been fed into the technology systems that are available and the ones that are being built today. That information technology that has been built is being fed information about all of us, creating a profile of all of us. And I'll tell you right now, the profile that is likely created of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex is not a good one. Because for every 1,000 article or, or opinion piece that goes out on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, for every 1,000, there's likely one or two that goes out that is able to contradict that narrative or to put out something more positive. Because let's, let's face it, the channels that exist even here on this platform of YouTube that are Sussex friendly and positive, right? We probably can count them not in the hundreds. But if I am, and, and the amount of, of, of subscriptions and members that are part of those channels are a limited bunch. And when I say a limited bunch, like, Un unless I, 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 I don't know of it, uh, and I, I probably don't, but I don't know of any Sussex friendly channel that has over 100,000 subscribers. I'll tell you, there are many of the hateful channels that have over 100,000 subscribers. That information of negativity is being shared. That information is being um, scraped by AI. And AI is turning that into data. Data that is creating a profile of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. 
Look, I'm not... I'm not living in some fantasy world. I know that what we try to do here in this channel, it's merely one grain of sand. It really is. One grain of sand. But even if it's one grain of sand, it's one grain of sand. That's the way I look at it. It's one grain of sand that, that at least exists, that didn't exist before. And I would like for this grain of sand to do everything in its capability in order to do several things. One is to, as I said prior, uplift and support what the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are doing. Two, to bring that information to you. For us to celebrate, for us to share, for us to support, elevate, right? Three, that the content also entertains. That there are times where I've tried to make this channel into a more holistic channel, but I, I, I've realized that that is hurting the channel more than I'm doing the channel any good. And I can talk about that later. But entertain. So the way you receive the information is entertaining. You can digest it. Um, it could be a little bit provocative. But for you not to just, after a minute of watching, just turn it off and say, Ugh, well, I don't care. Right? So I, I try my very best to do that. And, and, and what I've tried to do now is to try to find a balance. That's why I started to, as I said, respond, have a counterpoint, counterpoint to, what's that, Palace Confidential. And as I looked at, because I, 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 I watch this stuff and I make a decision. I'm like, is it, is it enough for me to just give a quick pam pam slap back or something? You know what I mean? And if it's information that is already kind of repeated, 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 then I'm like, well, it's already there. It's been there for like two years now. It's nothing new. And I get it. Some of the people who they bring forth to speak, they're repeating the same information many times, but it's someone new saying it. When you have, what's his name, Dick, right? Who's a former police in charge of security for the late queen. When he is saying the things he is saying, AI, captures that AI also captures his titles and what why is his opinion important now his opinion is going to be more important than mine I don't have an association to the late queen I, I've, I've I'm, I'm, I'm a subject so AI will take that opinion and, 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 and make it higher in the scale of, well, who is likely right? Antonio over here or Dick over here? Now, what AI may do is have Dick's opinion, but because there are several more opinions of five of us, four of us that are saying, listen, Dick, that's not how it happened. Then AI kind of will put Dick into a question mark. Do you, do you folks understand where, where, what, you know what I mean? It will put it into a question mark because then it's sort of like a jury or, or a judge. Now AI is, 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 is looking at this mathematically because it's all numbers and saying, hang on a second. So for your opinion, right? You, you have like a, a one assigned to it. Because of your title, you get another one assigned to it. Now, because of your relation to the royals, you have another one assigned to it. So you've got 
you you are a number three i i don't get a number one because i don't my relation to these the people are not closer so let's say i get half a point 0 0.5 another content creator uploads content that is similar challenging these folks they get a 0 0.5 and another 0 0.5 another 0 0.5 and so on and so on right so if we now outnumber Dick's opinion, right? Because then AI will look look at these seven and go, okay, oh, hang on a second. There are now 15 people who are contradicting what Dick just said. So then AI will put it more on a balancing play field. So I give you all this long-winded explanation with the hope that I'm making myself clear. I don't know if I am. Is the best way I can explain it. But if you have any more questions that you would like me to answer about how this AI thing is working, please let me know. What I don't know, I will seek the answer. The stuff that I know, I'm telling you it right now, right? Because besides what m my niece and I conversed about, I went to look, because I also, in my former job, we were now starting to do things with, with AI. And this, this was about two years ago, right? AI has always been there, but the way it's now being presented to the general public, right? And how it's being used to collect information. That is why they'll say many times, and it's a warning to many who depend on AI to do their, their essays or, or test score or whatever. Um, you can, AI doesn't always give you proper information and it's called it's not, it's not dreaming it's it's a there's a word f uh, for it which escaped my mind right now it's having an an illusion not illusion um it, yeah it's, i think it's either illusion or a mirage or something to that to that end so let's say for 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 for, for example you may ask it a question and say um tell me what you know about princess diana and it will give you all this information. This is what I know about Princess Diana, blah, 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 blah. And then somewhere in that narrative, it may have collected information also from the crown, meaning this, this TV series or the Netflix, the Netflix series. And then it will start giving you information that is not what actually happened, but information from the crown, a series. You know what I mean? So now you go and you read all of this and you're thinking, well, all of this is, is, is what happened, but it's not what happened, right? Diana didn't appear to the queen, <laughs> as far as we know. She didn't appear to, 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 to now King, King Charles and I don't know, pardon him or something. It didn't happen. So this stuff is really important. But most important to me is each and every one of you. The people who decided to subscribe, the people who decided to become members, you are important to me. The last thing I want to do is to turn you away from the content I create. I don't want to do that. Because I do this out of love. I do this out of us as a little army um, trying to defend and, and in our own way protect um, and doing it in every possible way that we know and I know that content that, that is negative when one is responding back to these derangers or to this stuff can become very tiresome because it brings you down it is, it is, it is this, this dark cloud so my question for you, my proposition, how would you like us to handle this? Because I don't want you to be disengaged from Majesty Sussex report. I don't want you to turn away. I don't want you to unsubscribe. I don't want you to just 
show up and watch two minutes of the content and then say, Ugh, I, I, I don't want that. I want you to be informed. I want you to understand what's out there. I want you to be entertained. So <sighs> this has been a long, long, long <laughs> proposition. What do I do? What do I do? I know I'm not going to make everyone happy. I know that. But I also don't want you to be disengaged. Right? So what do I do? I thought maybe content where I'm responding back or I'm trying to do a counterpoint, just that this is a counterpoint. So you, you will know that you'll hear things from those deranger people, right? Or there'll be quotes or images, sound. So you are, you know, warned. So I leave it up to all of you. What I would like is that I would, I don't want anyone to respond back to anyone else's opinion and thought. All of these opinions, thought, recommendations are for me, are for the channel. Okay? Because what I do not want to happen is if one of you have opinion A and then someone has opinion B and someone has opinion C and then someone with opinion C goes off on the person who has opinion A and the person who has opinion A goes off on the person who has opinion B. I will not stand for that. This is not that engagement at all. That's not the engagement I'm looking for. I'm looking for engagement that respect each individual's thought and opinion. I'm looking for engagement that we are a diverse group of people from across this beautiful planet, right? And we have a few things in common. And there's going to be another few things that we will disagree on. What I'm looking for is to have a fountain of the, all the sort of thought of how you may look at this issue. So then I can categorize them, go through them, and find a solution and present that solution to you. I'm going to stop it now. I've talked a lot. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. I appreciate you coming all the way here. I, you know, at this point to listen. If you skipped ahead, that's that's okay too. Please let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. I'm